arc. And uh, without further ado, let's dive straight into the, the first one. So the first one is looking for someone. Now, the number one ingredient that you need for that is to make the effort to look for them. Whether you meet them through friends, whether you meet them through parents, you go on these apps, but you have to make the effort. Uh, you can't expect someone to land in your lap when, uh, you know, just hoping, yeah, I'm ready, but please come to me. I mean, those days are gone. Uh, and, and I'm sure you guys won't even want that anymore because that means just meeting someone and getting married to them. And I don't think uh, any of us are, are in that boat or ever have been, uh, even though we were from a different generation. So make that effort. Uh, put yourself out there to look for someone. So effort is important. Yeah, and I'd say that, you know, building on that, um, I'd say be opportunistic. And by that, I mean, you know, don't worry about who's making the introduction. Are you meeting them on a, on a dating app? Are you meeting them on a matrimonial site? Are you meeting them through a friend? Are you meeting them through your parents? You know, have an open mind. You never know what could come your way. And uh, at the very least, you're just going to, you know, have a, have a, co a coffee with them. So, so I'd say just be really opportunistic and, and pursue them, um, you know, with, with, the, with the focus on an outcome, actually. So the second thing that you need to be uh, in the mode is of an open mind. And Siddharth did use that word. You need to have an open mind. Uh, it doesn't matter how that introduction happened or who made the first move. Often people who reach out to us, uh, what we do these days is, is immediately reject them. Like, oh, they reached out to me. I mean, you're, the first thing you should be thinking is, hey, they like me, so they're reaching out to me. Not be dismissive of the fact that they made the first move. And I hear that a lot with people that I talk to that, I don't know, you know, he pinged me, she pinged me. Should I like, uh, you know, maybe they're desperate. I mean, how do, uh, I mean, this forum is for that, right? So you can't, think like that. And many times you make the first move too. And then why think <clears throat> differently about yourself then? So, you know, don't, don't be judgmental to a level where it's detrimental. <laughs> so have an open mind it, and on, on everything, whether, you know, photo, whether it's profile, if there's something nice about someone and they're reaching out to you, or you feel like reaching out to them, but you're like, oh, I don't like this, but I like this. Just, just make the move because you have no idea. Like a profile uh, or even a first meeting um, is, is really like not, if you had a reasonably good time, even in your first meeting, I would say do the second meeting. If you're really off, yeah, you'll know that also. So have an open mind. Yeah, and I'd say that, you know, from, from the data that we have at Flow, um, of the people who have gotten into relationships, in the majority of them, actually the woman <laughs> reached out to the man first. And uh, yeah. that's actually an interesting um, data point because I think um, we're living in a, we're in 2020 for heaven's sake. So it, you know, it doesn't matter who initiates the, the first uh, move and don't, don't again, you know, have it devolve into some sort of a power play. Just go with the flow, <laughs> unintended, <laughs> and, uh, and you see really great, um, great results. And then when you are having a, a reasonably good conversation, I'd say quickly meet in real life. That's the third thing you need to do when you're trying to look for someone. You meet them quickly in real life, preferably through an activity, because what that does is it keeps the awkwardness out. Uh, you know, when, when, even when, you, and no matter how you meet, whether you meet someone on a dating app and you're meeting them for the first time, or you're meeting them through parents or friends, there is a little bit of, have, you know, um, anxiousness, nervousness. Um, and and I, I really believe that when people meet in a setup, uh, you know, they try to put their best foot forward, but there is so much awkwardness that the vibes are very mixed up. And uh, very often I feel two people who could have been great together cannot move beyond that. <laughs> so meet for an activity because there's no pressure on anyone. It could be, I mean, so that give them a few examples of what they I mean, can do. I would say that, you know, pick something that you enjoy doing yourself. Right? And, and it shouldn't be like too uh, extreme or intense. So it could be, you know, if, you're, if you enjoy art, you could go to the NGMA. There's, there's really great museums all over the country. 
and there's also the good thing is that most of them have a cafeteria so you could um, you know bounce off the museum and continue the date uh, over a cup of coffee or a snack out there i would say I mean, you know the default is of course meet for coffee at a coffee shop or meet for drinks at a bar i think you can be, be a little more innovative without also spending a lot of money like you know doing these um like maybe going for a run also uh, or historical walks or a historical so walk. walks there's a lot of history yeah. walks in every city now and um and, and i think you know just uh taking that step beyond the obvious i i think is great because offbeat can be very attractive uh, especially if it's something that puts you in your element um i think it also shows you in a in a very good light and with uh, with a lot of um, confidence so those are the three important things you need to do when you're looking for someone then you do find that person now what are the there again i've i've kept it at three actually because it's simple it's easy to remember and it's really the essence of of what you guys need to be doing so confidence is number one when you identify the person be confident of who you are of the fact that you like them uh and when i say the fact that you like them like you feel it literally like yeah you know i do want to pursue this confidence in that because that also gets a uh, communicated through your vibe uh and then you know and and you can show that confidence by really stating like being flirty you know smiling uh, sending a vibe that that's telling them that you're attracted to them um you definitely have to have to do that that romantic vibe has to go for the person to know that you're interested in them romantically and it ha- has to be done very early on you cannot uh wait and 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 what what the trap you get into if you wait is friend zone and that is very difficult to get out of <laughs> yeah i i you know to build on that i'd say your intent should come out quickly directly and also with a sense of confidence so regardless of what kind of relationship you are looking for let that be made very clear to the other person very soon in the in the interaction uh if you're looking to get married uh you know there's there's really no harm in stating that in a very matter of fact way you don't want to obviously come across as you know i want to get married next week or come across as being desperate but if you're a little unsure also just say that hey you know i'm really not very sure and i'm i'm um, happy to meet and um, you know see where this goes so so that you know statement of intent directly and with respect i think is is really critical in making sure that you don't get into the the friend zone i think one of the traps that men perhaps more than women uh fall into is that they think that you know they'll spend a little bit of time they'll build some rapport and then maybe a month later they'll tell the uh, the lady how they feel um that generally doesn't work that will get you friend zone so avoid that and and like i said that's that doesn't show confidence on your part yeah. so so be confident of yeah you know i'm interested in you then of course honesty you know um that is like the bedrock of the relationship and this is a great time to lay it and honesty about like your intent for example or anything for example if you have been married before you know of course it's layers feeling but you have to be really honest on who you are and where you are in your life um and yeah i think i think this is a uh, it's important to to like simran says you know peel the onion one layer at a time so if there is something that's looking promising and um you feel that it has potential to become a serious relationship etc it's really important to give all the disclosures at the appropriate point in time so it's not like you know you have to put it out on your profile or on the first date also but like simran said if you've been married before that's an important disclosure you can't you can't conceal that if you've got a medical condition yeah. uh that that you would like to know about if you were in the other person's shoes you should definitely disclose it at the appropriate point in time if you've got a life situation that's um, that's uh, that's important that the other person needs to know 
think it's it's important to again you know put that out uh, at the appropriate point in time and here i would say you know uh, of course these are like really uh, you know situations so to say honesty and even like i said who you are don't pretend to be someone you're not uh, just because you read it somewhere just because they say oh if you do this there's a better chance of you finding the you know other person finding you attractive no that's wrong because you cannot pretend for the rest of your life so just be who you really are that's the third second thing that you need in this phase the third thing that you need is is positivity you have to keep your interactions really positive because that is definitely a bond and binder that sticks through and you need it for the rest of your lives you know actually so it's really important to have a good time together have a positive time together because that's how you start getting into each other's system uh, and and in a good way you know so keep your interactions really positive do not bring i mean for example now we're going through this really hard times i mean globally of course you know there will be a little banter but change the topic to something lighter change you know don't keep discussing this because what it's doing is it's not leaving uh, when you leave that conversation there's just so much heaviness and you are not giving the person the space to think about you and smile uh, when they think about you um, yeah i i think i think the one uh, aspect that i'd like to add over here is that it's it's actually easier to talk about negative stuff and agree on them so whether it's you know uh, the pollution the traffic corona virus etc etc right the economy whatever right and and that might seem to be you know a bond being formed but be very careful of that because it's actually not forming a positive bond and when uh, when you want to anchor the person the other person in a in a memory it had better be a positive memory rather than talking about you know something that uh, is is negative so so it's really critical and it's a conscious effort that that you have to make you don't have to be unnatural about it but you have to be consciously moving in the direction of talking about um things that are positive and then our last phase for this evening is when you know that you want to explore things seriously with this individual the number one thing that you need to do is is show them that you're noticing things about them that you care that is really really something again that lasts a lifetime the caring so you have to show in little things that you do um, you know remembering the drink that the person likes or a song that that was because you would have been on on a few dates with them so or, or picking their favorite restaurant to go to for a meal or you know going to see a play that you think is not that exciting but because you know that this person will, will like it you would know enough about that individual to know what are the little things you can do to show that you care which which tells them that hey you're looking at this in a deeper way now and you want to make this into something meaningful so absolutely show that you care then the next thing that you need is graciousness and when i say graciousness it's uh, about um, you know forgiveness you know by this time there will be interactions <clears throat> which are maybe not pleasant uh, maybe something irks you about them but you have to know that nobody is going to feel that perfection thing uh, that that we all set our standards to not even you for anyone so you have to have that graciousness to know that hey this can go I, i i don't have to make this a big deal because those things start also the more the interactions start increasing the there are things that do happen and you have to have that graciousness that compassion and that forgiving um, attitude to move on from things that are not important and you will know that you're intuitively you'll know that that this i can let go this i can't you know so be aware of that and be gracious uh so that again you know it really makes because you're now getting into the deep phase and that really makes things deep uh, so that's going to give them an example of ours how we uh, were in this phase <laughs> which one <laughs> <laughs> why you send me with your friend 
but oh yeah <laughs> you know so um, we've gone out um, you know for a, 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 a trip somewhere actually and that was uh, an alumni get together of mine and Simran fell ill over there and you know I sent her back home with a friend of mine and uh, that wasn't the right thing to do so she was you know unwell she went into you know she had to go to the uh, OPD in a, in a hospital it was a bad migraine and when she got out she was obviously really really pissed she was like really upset and I think the, the important thing was that, um, you know, I took ownership. I said, hey, listen, I, I really screwed this one up and uh, I'm not going to make any excuses and I'm, I'm sorry about it. Uh, and, and I think, you know, that, that in a lot of ways just showed that, hey, I'm able yeah. to take responsibility for my actions. And I think when, when you are that kind of a person, male or female, it doesn't matter you also expect that from the other person and that like Simran says takes your relationship much uh, exactly. it definitely brought us like so <clears throat> much more uh, closer you know any of these interactions where we moved on from an experience that wasn't like a happy path you know it definitely brings you closer and increases the depth in the relationship and I think, I think before we go to the last point, I think the other thing about graciousness is also, it doesn't have to only be, you know, uh, a negative aspect. It could be something like, hey, you're, let's say that, you know, you go to the other person's place for dinner, they cook you a meal. And then, you know, on your way back home in your Uber or Ola, you send them a, a message saying, hey, you know, I really enjoyed the meal. And this is what I enjoyed about it. Because it shows so many different aspects that hey first of all you're sending a message thanking the other person secondly you obviously were paying a lot of attention during the date that um, that then you know you can talk about it later on and i think while it might seem like a small signal i think it's really really important to to do the positive also it is really the small things that you do that that really leave an impact uh, it's very important to know that and the last thing is respect in this phase, you, which is true about every phase, but more so in this phase because you want to take it to the next level and you want to show that person that, hey, this is going to be the journey of our life. So respect is really important. And, and how you show respect uh, in this phase is by really simple things, uh, like not looking at your screens when you're together, showing up on time uh, to meet each other. These are the things that really tell the person that, hey, you really respect them. And that, again, is like a bedrock of forming a relationship. Uh, for, for especially like urban Indians, educated Indians, and the people that you want to be with. Yeah. And, you know, there was one uh, interesting anecdote that I read. I think it was from Malcolm Gladwell's book, Blink. And I think it was like in the first chapter itself, there was a, a love lab in Seattle, Washington where um, a psychologist could, he would meet with couples and counsel them. And as soon as they walked in, within a matter of, you know, less than a minute, he figured out whether this couple was going to be together or not. And when he was really quizzed and when Malcolm Gladwell went into the depths of it, what he figured out was that the, uh, that the psychologist was able to figure out whether there was respect between the couple. And that could mean something like, uh, like, you know, the obvious facts that Simran stated, like, you know, whether you're looking at your phone, etc. But it could also mean when you're really dismissive. And a lot of that can be communicated in body language. So, you know, if you're rolling your eyes, <laughs> right? or if you're just, you know, distracted, you're looking away. So those are aspects that you actually can't fake it. Uh, you're better off, you know, exiting that relationship than, than trying to fake something, especially respect. And it's also important, like Simon says, that, you know, it's, it's the bedrock of a, a, a relationship. And even if that relationship doesn't, you know, come to fruition in marriage, at least you have sort of learned how to respect people. And I think that's really an important skill to have. So it is, it is, you know, far beyond romance. I think respect is, is like the bedrock of any relationship. Um, so it's, it's, it's that, that important, I'd say. So those are the 
key things that we think we you should be equipped with to start looking for someone and then identify the person and then work on getting into a relationship. Could you guys do a quick recap for everyone uh, who had trouble with audio and connecting? Sure, sure. So, so we've obviously kept the phase that you guys are in, in mind. So to just recap, what are the essentials? Uh, we've kept it phase wise. Your phase number one is when you're looking for someone. Now, what do you need to do in that phase? Number one is that you need to make the effort to look for that person. And that effort comes in whether you're on apps, matrimonial sites, meeting through your friends, meeting through your parents. So that effort needs to be made when you're looking for someone. Then the second thing you need to do in this phase is have an open mind. <laughs> uh, meet, meet as many people, to find reasons to meet them rather than reasons to dismiss them. So have an open mind, don't be judgmental. Third is meet in real life, preferably through an activity, because then you really see the person for who they are, because not everybody is comfortable in the spotlight. <laughs> and every time you're meeting um, in a setup or just a simple date, there is spotlight on both of you. So try to get that off on some activity. An activity could be something as simple as going to a museum, going for a historical walk, uh, there are many avenues in the city that, that you can choose to do. You could even go um, for bowling if you both like bowling. So those are the three things that, that, that you need to um, have a foundation of uh, when you're looking for someone. The next phase is when you've identified the person that you think that things can go further with. What do you need to do in that phase? Number one is confidence. And when I say confidence, confidence to say to that person, or, or give the person the vibe and um, that, that you like them uh, very, uh, you know, quickly on, uh, not waiting to get friends on, uh, hanging out and enjoying, but quickly on that, yeah, I'm interested in you romantically. So have that confidence to do that. Second is have, an, uh, have, have honesty of who you are. Don't pretend to be someone that you're not. Be who you are from day one. Because that is when you will know that this thing can last and I don't have to pretend. And then honesty of any situation that you're in, whether you've been married before or there is a medical situation, be honest, um, very important. The third one is keep your interactions really positive. Positivity is, is what remains. Positivity it creates a bond that, that's hard to break. So be really positive in your interactions, keep them happy, keep them, because that is what you start getting addicted to, like the, the good times that you have together. So keep it really positive. And of course, we move to the third phase where you know that you want to get more, like you want to really make this happen. And, and this is getting serious. And how do you make that into a serious uh, relationship is by doing things like showing that you care, uh, because that's when the person knows that, hey, this is getting deeper now. You know, you notice things about them, you let them know that you're noticing things about them, picking their, like the examples I gave were picking their favorite song, going to a restaurant that they like rather than yours. So they know that you care. So show them you care. The second thing is graciousness. You know, by this time, there will be things that will happen that perhaps you, uh, you know, that are away from the happy path. Uh, be gracious, uh, know which ones you have to let go of and move on. And, and those, that graciousness will actually, again, make the relationship more deep. And the last one is respect. Very, very important. Uh, respecting each other is something that, that will actually make things last a lifetime. So that is, again, something really important. And, and in this phase, how you could show it very easily is, like I said, by showing up on time every time by not looking at your phone screens. Um, and like Siddharth said, uh, you gave a good example of not rolling your eyes at something that yeah. they said. So, so that's the summary. And now we're open for questions. So the first question that we have is uh, from Kanchan who asked on the group, how quickly should we plan to travel together or should we not do that until we've already set the base? And Kanchan, if you want to turn on audio or video and you want to ask uh, Simran and Siddharth this question or add more to it, um, feel free to go ahead and do that. 
I'll go ahead and answer it uh, till Kanchan reacts. Um, so you, I mean, come on, you guys are adults and if you want to go out, travel with someone, please do that. I think it's a great way to know, uh, you know, whether you, how, how things are going to be with each other. So absolutely, there's no reason, you know, I would say here's, you know, where we need to stop thinking too much and be natural. And again, I will put it to uh, the fact that, you know, if you think that there is something wrong in going for a holiday with someone, then you are going to transfer that why. But if you think there's nothing wrong with it and, you know, you're not, uh, you know, uh, and I don't know what the reason, could be a moral reason, there is no morality here. Come on, we're in the 21st century. But if you feel guilty about going or there is some inhibition, don't do it because then you're not going to have a good time. You're going to pass a vibe that is uh, not the vibe that you want to send to someone that you want to be in a relationship with. But if you're like really, uh, you know, uh, okay with it, and I really think there's nothing wrong. I went, uh, Sizal and I went for our first holiday or travel together really on our third date. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. That was the third time we were meeting and we met at the airport going to Sri Lanka. We went to Sri Lanka. <laughs> I really thought there was nothing wrong with that. So it's really, you know, your own um, inhibitions. And if you are inhibited, don't do it because then you're going to send really mixed vibes to an individual and, and people don't decode these vibes. They either feel uncomfortable or not uh, or, or comfortable. So Go with what sits well with you, but there is nothing wrong in going on on a, on a holiday with someone. It doesn't matter which date. Does that help, uh, Kanchan? Uh, while Kanchan responds, we have one more question from the audience. Um, so Anish says, if I'm pursuing someone and we've not been able to meet for whatever reason several times, uh, does that break the spark? You know, it really depends on uh, the reason. Because say you are in different cities. I mean, that's really hard to crack, right? Uh, and if you are having a great conversation, despite not being able to meet and you feel the spark is there, sure. But if you are in the same city and you are unable to meet on several occasions, then I think you need to really think like, what does this mean? And who is calling off that meeting uh, and, and then, um, you know, take a call because then it could be just excuses and, and stringing the other person on. Does that answer your question, Anish? Um, while Anish responds, I have, oh, Anish says yes. Um, but I have a follow up to this, uh, especially now in the time of Corona where it's hard to meet in real life. Um, and people are definitely, you know, gonna have been in situations where they were planning to meet, but now it's not possible because of the lockdown. Um, what advice do you have for, for singles who are trying to make this virtual connect work in a time when we're not able to meet? Yeah, yeah I would say that if you're really, uh, if both parties are okay, you should definitely get on video chat. I mean, come on, there's WhatsApp video too. Uh, so, you know, get all Zoom link if you don't want to share your numbers. Um, Google talk, uh, whatever like works, get on a video call with the person uh, because we don't know for how long this lockdown is going to last. Uh, so get on a video call. Uh, I would also say that, you know, if you have never met them in real life, I would keep the banter really, um, you know, simple. And uh, because the other fear that we face in these <clears throat> times is that we can think that we are in a relationship with someone that we've never met. Those synthetic relationships can happen in these times a lot. So be very cognizant of knowing that you're just communicating with someone and you're not getting into a committed relationship with them. Uh, because till you don't meet them in real life, I would say don't even do that on video. Till you don't meet them in real life, don't invest that kind of emotion where you think that you are now committed to this person. Of course, flirt, you know, uh, you know, engaging conversations, but be very, very wary of where you're taking this emotionally for yourself, because it's, it's really not real, uh, that relationship. So don't think that you're committed to that person. But like I said, get on video uh, if both parties are okay. 
uh, don't insist if someone's saying no, that let's get on with you. But that's not like that's again, uh, in, in this world, it'll be stalking someone and insisting. But those are the things that you guys should keep in mind that don't don't think that you're in a committed relationship with someone you've not met. Yeah, in the in the realm of, you know, that people not being who they are and, you know, getting emotionally invested in something that's maybe not a good idea. Uh, Nisha has a question and she says, when you get a proposal from someone outside of the state where you reside, or for that matter, from someone outside of the country, um, and especially someone who's another faith or coming from a friend or a relative, how do you check or how do you know that that person is genuine? Um, and her question is about checking family background, character, upbringing, because she's had a friend who's been recently introduced to a boy and they were about to get married, but then uh, the person found out that he was actually cheating on her and uh, she experienced a lot of mental torture. Um, mm. So it's a, it's a difficult story, but she's wondering, what are your views on this? And uh, Nisha, I'm sure it's not just all men that are dishonest. Uh, there are women as well. Uh, I'm going to try and remove the gender, <laughs> gender bias from that yeah. question. I think it happens in ways. And so uh, similar to that, maybe you can throw some light on that. You know, this is really unfortunate. And, uh, you know, I've had a friend who almost got married to someone who was already married with a kid in, in the U.S. And, uh, and these are like really unfortunate things that happen and they're not new now. I mean, this I'm talking about at least 15 years ago uh, that this happened. And, 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 you know, and even when you check the background, uh, sometimes it comes really clean uh, because they do such a great job of hiding things. So, you know, this is, uh, I would say that especially, you know, to answer, I'm going to break this up a little bit, your um, question. So you meet someone who's out of state. I would say that you, before you take any call, you should meet them in their city uh, to really know, you know, go where they are, whether it's uh, out of country or it's out of state. If you think you're really connecting with them, then please make that effort to go there. It doesn't matter if you're going to see them, especially I often see that, you know, people get very nervous about, uh, especially the person who's receiving you, you know, don't come to the city because of me. I mean, I'm sure like I have faced that and I'm sure many of you have faced that with, um, you know, intergeographic um, connections where, where people don't want um, to give the impression that how, how come and, you know, so, so, but, but do make that effort. And, you know, in, in a way that you take the responsibility that hey, I'm coming for myself and not for you, but do make the effort to see them in, in the city they're claiming to be in. Um, and then, you know, you will, you know, there are things when, and I would say these are instinctive things that you have to really keep your radar high to know that there's something amiss. And when you feel that, then don't force yourself to do anything with this individual. Because I would say that, that people who do this, they do such a great job of hiding it till they're discovered, um, that it'll be very hard to find this for an individual unless you unleash some detective on them, uh, which is very hard to do and doesn't really happen in normal life. But, but I think two things, like go to their city and, and number one is, is see the instinct because they always give you a signal. It is And you have to take an action on it. Uh, so that's yeah, I'll, I'll add a couple of points over here because uh, it's a really important question. I have, um, you know, seen a bunch of scams that, that have happened. Uh, a lot of them are on matrimonial sites. And, you know, we always think that this can't happen to us. Uh, but I'll, I, I won't go into what the scams are, but I will tell you the biggest red flag, especially if it's across geographies, is when the person creates an emergency. Okay. And then they ask you for some money. That is like a old tried and tested scam that still works. It works with a lot of brilliant people. Uh, and, and, you know, nobody is really uh, above it. Right. So, so if anybody at any point in time asks you to transfer money, right, just drop that boss. That's just not on. Okay. Um, and then the second thing is, uh, you know, I think the instinctive stuff again, like, you know, 
that, that you pick up is going to be, um, you know, you check out their LinkedIn profile, check out their social handles. And are they resisting sharing something with you? So, so I think, you know, there are, there are layers of that. And of course, now everything is so, you know, um, open, openly shared. I'm not suggesting that you need to, you know, be paranoid at all times, but trust your instinct because the, the social profiles will also give you some signal, whether it is, you know, other people commenting, whether it is, you know, the way they're conducting themselves, etc. So I think that's, that's what I would add to what's Yeah, and you know, if they're not on a digital platform, on any digital platform, I would also then stay away from them because we all have some digital footprint LinkedIn, especially, you know, nobody is, I think most of us have a LinkedIn account yeah. now. So. And, and, you know, it might sound very cool. Oh, you know, I'm not on any digital platform, et cetera, et cetera. Fine. Uh, what you do need to do is then meet that person. But, and, and if that person has a digital presence, which 99.9% .9 of the people will have, uh, you should make sure that it's the same person, right? Uh, that, that you're meeting. So, so uh, you have to connect the dots also. If I, would, I would go to the extent of saying that if a person says that they don't have a digital profile and they're across geographies, just don't, just, just don't it, even yeah. go there. I mean, uh, it just sounds like uh, bad news. Shall we move on to the next question? Uh, great. This one is actually about flow. Um, and one of our users is asking, you know, how do I talk about what brings me to flow and you know, how do I connect with people as we all may not have the same objective? Just no, he said, that. We, no, the question is, I asked a lot, uh, I get asked a lot, what brings, what brings me to flow and conversations are that a part of how I can't figure out and how to respond to that. It's confusing as aren't we all here with same objective? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's saying, uh, or she's saying that they're here. I actually don't think so. Uh, you know, uh, people are, um, of course, they're looking for someone, but they're not in a place where maybe they want to get married. And a lot of people actually are, are, are thinking about marriage, but they cannot say it to everybody, right? <laughs> so maybe that's why um, uh, a lot of people, they, whoever's asking you these questions, perhaps have met people who are not ready to get married. They want to explore a little more. And I think people on their marriage meter are at different places at different times. So um, the reason they could be asking you is to really check where you are because they might be in a place where they do want to get married immediately or they're at a place where they want to explore and then get married and they just want to make sure that if they connect with you, you're on the same, same level. So uh, I think that would be uh, the reason. I'll, just add, yeah. I'll give a little bit of data over here. In our last uh, Single in the City survey, when we asked people what they were looking for, there were broadly a flow, right? There were broadly three sets of people, right? First of all, the umbrella is that everybody is looking for something that is serious. But what's different in these three sets of people is that some people are looking to get married in the next three to six yeah. months. Some people are willing to go on for, to get into a committed relationship for a year and some people, and then get married. And then the third set is like, you know, I just want to be in a committed relationship. I'm not even sure about marriage. It might happen after a year or two. So I think it's, it's important to establish that intent um, reasonably upfront and, and in a, in a gracious manner. Talking about commitment, Anish has a great question for us. Um, he says, I recently realized that I'm a commitment phobe because in my last relationship, I was really invested and I don't want to be so vulnerable right now. So how do I break that? He says he was asking this question because a relationship started to get serious. And the moment that that happened, he started to become unavailable. Um. I would say, Anish, that you need to heal from your previous relationship. Like I said, you know, when we've had deep emotional connect with someone and things don't work out the way we envisioned, it is a deep hurt which we never address. Until you don't address that hurt, you will be in this situation. Uh, and addressing that hurt can be you, first of all, acknowledging that there is a deep hurt because uh, 
like I and I talked about it last time also that we we feel in in this space especially we feel we have to soldier on and you know we can do it all feelings when they are hurt they are sometimes like bigger than any wound physical wound that you can think of so acknowledge that because till you don't heal from that you are going to be in this place and I would say that you know when when you meet someone that you think you're connecting with you should let them know also that you know you are in a place where you're healing from this uh, be honest like one of the things that i said be honest of where you are in your in your head and heart and 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 also then let them know that you're really enjoying the time with them but you need a little more time before things get into a more deeper level and i think that honesty is really going to help uh, that other person, because then they can decide how they will navigate around you. And then you have to be okay with whatever they decide. So I would say heal and be honest of where you are. Give yourself, uh, give yourself that love to heal, you know, and if you need to see a counselor for yeah. that, please do. I was going to add that. And, um, I think a lot of us, um, uh, um, you know, have been in at least one relationship, not everybody, but uh, at least half of us, at least that's what the data says. Um, and, and I'd say that, you know, you, it's, it's a conscious effort. First of all, it could be through conversation. It could be through reading up. I, I certainly read up a lot. Uh, and it could be through counseling. And the only thing that I would say with counseling is that we're all intelligent people. You just need to make sure that the counselor is right for you and, and you don't become like super dependent on that person. I hope that helps Anish. Um, thanks Nisha for um, acknowledging that you like the answer. Hi Tamanna, welcome. We saw your little wave. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Just being us late, but you made it. I'm glad. Great. So we have another question, which is um, just a brief question. Adding yeah. on to the scenario, what's a good time to do a video call, especially because different people have different levels of comfort. And sometimes we jump the gun uh, when they're really not ready to do it. I find judging this is extremely difficult. How do we know when's the right time? See, it will be very difficult. You have to, you have to ask. And if they say no, you have to be graceful and take that no and move on as if nothing really happened. <laughs> uh, because, and that's why I said that don't insist I, uh, on, on having that video call if the person is saying no, because then that is stockish. Uh, in this setup, right? Um, so you definitely ask that, you know, if, and you say if you're comfortable, sh shall we get on a video call? Uh, you know, I'd, I'd love to like know that, that I'm talking to, know who I'm talking to. Um, and if that person says, no, not right now, just don't bring it up. Don't bring it up. That you have planted a seed that, hey, I would like to do that. Then, you know, interact more, you know, and, and the more your interactions get meaningful, the more you will know when you should ask again, you know, and it could take a, a little more time than, than you would want to, you know, so you have to be patient, um, especially when someone has already said no, then you have to really wait. Uh, sometimes they might say, hey, okay, now I'm ready because you did plant a seed. But when <clears> someone <throat> says no, that is a no and you have to honor that. But there's no way of knowing when till you ask. So you have to ask also when you think you're ready. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have a, a question that's adding on to the previous one from Anish, um, where he said, supposing you are really relationship phobic and you want to communicate that to someone, but you don't want to seem disinterested. How do you do that? How do you communicate that you're still healing while also letting someone know that you are still interested in taking things forward with them? Um, uh, you know, the best way um, is to, like I said, honestly tell them where you are, but also let them know that, hey, I'm really enjoying my time with you. I really like hanging out with you. And I really think that you should know where I am. And this is where I am. And, and I'm, I'm telling you this honestly, but I really enjoy hanging out with you as well. But this is all that I can give right now, you know? So you have to let them know, like I said, even in my previous example, when I was giving it to Anish, that, that you be honest, but you let them know that you are 
enjoying the time with them. It is very important to, to make that statement as well, that there is something over here. And you could say it as like that as well, that I do feel, I look forward to meeting you. You say what, whatever you like about that person, again, genuine, honest, that I really like spending time with you. I have this sense of comfort around you. I, I look forward to hanging out with you, but I'm still healing. And you use those words that I'm still healing from this, which also gives them hope that you're getting ready for them perhaps, you know? And, um, and, and these are like subtle ways of communicating that you are interested, but you're not ready to um, uh, like, you know, uh, be in the space that they might have gotten so quickly. But does that mean, and you to say that, that does that mean I will never get there? I mean, I, 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 I might, you know? So there you have to use the hope a bit, uh, you know, but again, with honesty, like do not do it if, you, if you're going to lead them on. Don't do that. That is unfair. I like that because it makes it seem that, you know, it's not a rebound relationship and that you mm -hmm. are taking the time mm -hmm. uh, you know, to really heal before you move forward um, in a relationship. Yeah. And I, I'm going to throw one in here for the mix, um, which is, so we talked about a little bit about attending to mental health and getting counseling if that's required to overcome heartbreak, but that's not necessarily for everyone. What are some of the things that you'd recommend that you could do outside of, you know, going down the therapy route to um, really, you know, introspect and try and heal and overcome that heartbreak? See that I'll give Rick three important tips over here, actually. Number one is to know that it is nobody's fault that things didn't work out. Uh, you know, you have to learn from it, but the blame is, is again a negative emotion. Whether you're blaming yourself or you're blaming the other person, it will not allow you to heal. So the blame has to stop because that's a vicious circle that you get into, you know, and you always keep thinking that, hey, you could have changed that. So you have to stop blaming either or, you know, it's no one's fault. It didn't work out because it didn't, it wasn't meant to be. You have to know that. The second thing is, you know, very often what people say, you know, especially if you're still having that loving feeling, I'd say think about that person as often as you want, because it's when you put it away, like I shouldn't even think about this person. I shouldn't even like, you know, no memories should come. It really is like you're adding to your baggage quotient and how, because it's going to come back and bite you. So you think about that person as much as you want to. There's nothing wrong in those thoughts coming and getting out of your system. And third thing is don't try and get into a rebound situation because the, that's our number one place to go to that. Let me find someone else. I mean, it's not a, you, it, there's no replacement methodology that works in emotion. You know, you have to heal from that emotion. So, don't think that a replacement will be helpful because it's unfair to your own self, first of all, because, you know, you're going to get into that cycle and you will find it very hard to get out of that cycle. Um, and you, the, the person that you're replacing uh, this individual with is so unfair to them. And it will not, this will not be a happy relationship then because it's starting for all the wrong reasons. So these are the three things that you can do uh, as a stepping stone. Uh, number one is nobody is to be blamed. It is what it is, you know. Learn about yourself. Learn about things that don't sit well with you. And say, yeah, this is, this is me. I'm, I'm acknowledging this and that's it. Second is think about that person as much as you like. You have to get them out of your system. And, and that is extremely helpful. I've done it. It really helps. I'm talking from experience, guys. I mean, I've, I've had heartbreaks as well. <laughs> All of, I don't know anybody who hasn't, actually. I really don't. And third is, like I said, no replacement. Don't think that that is the way to move on. Does that help? That, that's really good. Um, we have one last question. Um, I think it's from Rafa, maybe? Um, iPad user, <laughs> uh, where he asks, what time frame do you think is reasonable in a scenario where one person is commitment phobic, but another person is, you know, you're just trying to build on that relationship or when two people are at different levels of the relationship, what's a good time frame to make a move? 
you know, I, I would say the good time frame to make a move is when you think that you are ready to get into a commitment with this individual. And I think it is a duty to you and to the bond that you're forming to let the person know where you are. And you, and again, this is just letting them know where you are. You should not insist on letting you know where they are because you are informing them of where you are. Hey, I really am getting into you and I would be interested in, in something serious or marriage or whatever, whatever it is that you want to say. You say that. But you do not say it as a question. You do not follow it up with, Thanks. where are you? Or what do you think? No way. A complete no, no. Because the person might not even have thought about it, whether it's a man or a woman. They're just having a great time. They're just getting into this right now. And to, and you, and believe me, there is no couple that comes to it, uh, you know, uh, at the same time. We didn't. I came to it first. Siddharth took eight, nine months to come to that place. But I did tell him when I knew that this is, this is where I am, that, hey, I'm in love with you. And I'm really interested in, in, in seeing where this goes. And I just want you to know that. I didn't even ask him what he felt for me, by the way. Because I really, uh, because it is a very individual uh, path, uh, actually, you know, and, and you have to respect that. So no asking the person, you know, and you know, what will happen when you do that? Two things can happen. One is that eventually that person does feel the same way about you or they don't. In either case, you get a reality and you have to be prepared to handle both situations actually. Because you don't know uh, what that other person is thinking, right? But by not asking that question, you're not forcing them to make a decision that might be wrong for them at that time for the relationship because a relationship is loving and healthy when both people want it. You can't force someone to have a relationship with you. But I think it is also your duty as an honest person in that bond to let the person know where you are. And there is no right or wrong time. When you are feeling it in your bones and you know that this is really something that you want to explore, seriously, say it. But don't expect or uh, don't make it a question of what do you think? You leave it over there. You have a great time after that and you never bring it up again. Because when then over a certain time period, you will know whether this is going to get into something or it is not. Also, both things can happen. And I have to give that, um, uh, you know, um, that view as well that it can go either way. But be honest, you know. Yes, Does that make sense, guys? Do you have anything else that you want to say about this? Does that make sense, what I just said? Yeah, I, at least to me, I think that makes sense. Um, and I can see from the comments that a lot of people have really resonated uh, with the answers that you guys have provided. So I'm going to ask uh, just one last question. What advice do you have, um, you know, for those of us that are embarking on relationships right now, uh, at the time of lockdown, in this, you know, corona situation, everybody's definitely in different phases. But is there like one underlying kind of, you know, tip that you have for everyone at different phases of relationships to keep in mind as, you know, we tread forward in this, um, in this scenario? The number one thing that I would say, which is true for anything right now, is to really keep ourselves positive, which is also really hard, right? Because we're really, and a lot of you will not even be with family. You will be alone right now. Um, and, and really reach out to the people that, uh, that anchor you. They, they really, uh, you feel like you belong. Because I think that is something that the isolation um, kind of takes away from you. So I would say uh, keep reaching out to the people that that anchor you. Um, you know whether and and, and you know I read in the uh, newspaper today that that many people who live alone are just engaging so much with their family uh, right now. So those are the things that that you should definitely be doing so that. Um, you're not getting into a phase where you're fe feeling alone because that's when you will make wrong relationship uh, 
decisions as well. So, and, and this is a relationship advice, even though it's out of the relationship realm, but like I said, keep yourself anchored with people that you think you belong with to not make wrong relationship decisions. Yeah, I think, I think there's also a, uh, a meta context over here because every one of us is probably, you know, going through a different emotion and there's broadly, you know, three or four sets of people again over here. One is, you know, perhaps the worst off are those who've actually got someone close to them who's got the illness. Then there are people who are really like, you know, in a bad shape because of the, uh, you know, maybe they've lost a job, etc. And then there's the set of people perhaps who are like, okay, you know, I, I think I'm doing okay. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's really bad what's going on and I feel terrible about it. But if you think about it, you know, there's the, the, the sets of people are going through dramatically different emotions. So I just say that, you know, temper whatever Simran said based on, on really where, where you are. And, and it, it cannot be a, a one size fits all. We have one last question. What do you do when you know the other person is healing? How do you assist or let them heal on their own? Such a beautiful question. Uh, <laughs> it's a really moving. And, and to think that you think like that, I must congratulate you. Such a beautiful uh, question. And, you know, the best thing is to, um, like I said, give them a good time with you. When they tell you that, you be there for them by not... Uh, by understanding that these things bother them. Maybe they don't want to talk about something like this. So a little more perception and seeing their body language and how they react to what you're talking about and then not uh, bringing those uh, topics up, making sure that you guys have a good time together. Like I, I'm repeating myself over there, but giving that person a, a, like a little haven outside of um, you know, what they're going through right now. Um, the healing has to be on their own, actually, but you have to let them know that you're there for them by, like I said, giving them that haven of comfort around you and not bringing up painful things uh, because that they will do on their own. Uh, so giving them that little respite uh, from what they're going through is, is a great way to like be there, assist them, actually. I'd, I'd add one um, important aspect over here, which is uh, you need to respect boundaries and you need to make sure that your boundaries are also being respected over here. So that's something that is a much longer conversation. I won't say much more, but I think that's an important aspect to, to uh, focus on also in the context of the question that you just asked. So great, we have one fun question from Rachita. She wants to know about fourth set of people. Talking <laughs> more than usual. Well, 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 absolutely, Rachita. We're all about that. We're really grateful to that set of people, man, and our, our thanks to them uh, for, for, for keeping this going. And, uh, and the other thing is that we're actually going to be doing this every Tuesday, guys. We're, we're going to be picking up some topic and talking about it in the relationship front so that we can um, use this time to get you guys ready to uh, get into the relationship that you deserve by the end of the lockdown. <laughs> so, uh, so join us every Tuesday. So like Simran Sadat said, thank you guys so much for doing this. I think it was fantastic. Um, I think there are a lot of questions that people are still now generating or you know, trying to, to put together. Um, when that happens, or if you have a question that you'd like to ask Simran and Sadat personally, please just drop an email to team at flow.in. Uh, we will answer your emails personally and ensure that you know, these topics come up for conversation in our Tuesday chats. So um, Sunan and Sadat will be back every Tuesday at seven uh, to talk with all of us about relationships, answer some of these burning questions, and also really just delve deeper, um, like Simran said, into getting us all relationship ready, using this time, uh, you know, really productively to heal 
to move on uh, and to come out at the end of it with a really positive outlook um, on relationships. So let's use this downtime to really reflect and be mindful of how we can approach um, relationships from you know, this exact mindset. Um, and Simran and Siddharth have laid out these three phases with some insights into what we should be doing depending on the phase that we're in. So I will see all of you on the Flow Common Room community. Um, you just need to go to your communities tab on the app, select city agnostic, which means that you're not selecting any city in particular and click on the Flow Common Room. That's where we'll all hang out after this session. And I'll leave a summary of um, the notes from this entire discussion. You can read them there. If you have more questions, like I said, please email them to team at flow.in. And if you enjoyed this session, please follow us on social media at Flow Network across all social media. And also rate us five stars on the App Store or Play Store. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening. And Simran said, you know, stay connected. Don't stay isolated. Remember, Flow is a community for you. We're all here. Every one of us ready to hang out. So if someone won't video chat with you, remember that there are a hundred other people who will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. Great. Thank you guys. Thanks, guys. Bye. 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 Simran is great. Spooky. <laughs> <laughs> so sweet. Bye, Bye guys. Bye.